I'm Johnny Heller, back with another For the Hell of It blog. This one from September 9th, 2021. We're going back in time. I have to write some new blogs to go forward in time. I haven't done it yet. Um, uh, just so you know, I'm doing this just because people said I should put uh, my blog out in video, so I'm doing it. I uh, hope you like it. You can subscribe. I don't know what that uh, entitles you to. If I have a contest, I guess you're going to be in it. So anyway, this particular, uh, for the hell of it, is called My Guide to DIY. Do it yourself. DDIY. Don't do it yourself. From September 10th, 2021. As many of you know, I am not anyone's first choice when it comes to tech help. In fact, I know next to nothing about tech. If a thing requires more than being plugged in and switched on, I want nothing to do with it. In fact, I fear all things tech, and yet here I am to tell you about DIY. DIY means do it yourself. You likely already knew this. I didn't. I looked it up. In this world of ever increasing specialization, somehow the idea of doing things yourself has become popular. It doesn't matter that we don't necessarily have the tools, skills, or desire to do anything ourselves. It's just somehow important that we be self-reliant, <laughs> even if we aren't. If this makes sense to you, well then let's switch places right now. I remember when I was growing up, there seemed to be a universal understanding that certain things were jobs for men. I realize that this is a negative sexual stereotype and utter nonsense, and certainly not the way one would think today, but there you have it. When I was growing up, no one was woke. We were mired in old-fashioned, trite tropes. The idea was that men did the heavy work. It wasn't meant to be offensive to women, but men were generally the ones who picked heavy things up and then put them back down again. Men hammered things together and, and welded things, and if you needed your roof tiled or your car fixed, well, that's what men were for. I'm not praising the stereotype, I'm only reporting it. Coffee. Ah. <clears throat> I always wondered about this. I, I never understood why I should be able to hit a nail with a hammer any better than a woman could. Now, I understood the lifting stuff. Men in general have dense bones and muscles and very little intelligence, so we're the natural choices to move a couch <clears throat> or a piano or, or a DeSoto, even a Danny DeVito. But we were not to be trusted around breakable items in shops or classy homes, and we were frequently to be found in our downstairs or garage shops where we kept our collection of nearly never used tools. I admired various neighborhood tool sheds, garage shops, where everyone's dad had a lovely corkboard thing with tools hanging in perfect alignment. And when you picked a tool from off its spot on the board, you'd see an outline of the tool, so one would always know where to put it back. This system also let tool owners know if a tool was missing, but did little by way of leaving room for tool upgrades or updates. I thought hanging tool boards were wonderful, but I had no admiration for the actual tools. They all looked were quite dangerous. I saw each one as a new and interesting way to cut off my fingers or lop slices off my arms or legs, and I wanted nothing to do with any of it. And when I learned to drive, I discovered that I was supposed to have some innate talent for car mechanics. I did, <laughs> by virtue of my gender. Now, where in the world does my gender have to do with automotive engine comprehension? When I'm in a car, and the car doesn't behave as a car should, I do what every man in history, since the invention of the automobile anyway, does. I get out, spread my legs far apart like a farmer looking over the crop fields, twist my mouth to the side, and nod. Then I open the hood, pull out the thingamajig that holds the hood open, look around a bit even though I am familiar with exactly nothing I see, and after a suitable length of time, <clears throat> I will check the oil. That is the extent of my automotive skill and knowledge. I know where the dipstick is. And that's only because I relate to a dipstick as I frequently am one. Excuse me. <clears throat> ah, good morning. <laughs> I do object to the notion that my gender somehow makes me automotive makes me an automotive guru. The last time I rented a car, this is serious, I, I had no idea how to make it go. There was no key. There was, there was a fob. A fob, I tell you. I sat there, and this is true, for half an hour with zero idea what that fob was for. The car rental guy came over and told me what to do. And I would likely still be there today if he hadn't told me about the recent updates to automobile engine starting. In my limited experience, most men tasked with fixing something or building something will know of one person who can actually do such stuff. That talented man 
Back then it was always a man, but today a man like me will welcome any gender orientation at all, as long as they don't ask me to help or give any opinions whatsoever. They will come by to help, because this is his glorious mission in life. And in spite of his salty language and protestations that he really isn't that handy, he will come, and he will do the job, and it will be wonderful. Interestingly, his arrival in the garage will send a signal to the other men in the neighborhood, and they will come as though called by Aragorn, son of Arathorn, like bees to their queen. They will come, starry-eyed and armed with beer, and they will stand around in a circle watching the one with actual talent and knowledge and skill, and they will cheer him on with whispered comments like, Yep, I thought that was it. Just give her one more twist. Now nah, you're going to want to be extra careful with this part. This last comment made by the really fat guy who nods sagely throughout the procedure as though he has done this exact repair hundreds of times even though he has never done it even once. And all the while our hero will work slowly and steadily and breathing very heavily through the nose, something that still happens whenever anyone does intricate tool work. I don't get it at all, but I'm generally not much for loud nose breathing. And when the job is complete, he will walk around the thing, nod once, wipe his hands on his pants, and say, eh, it'll do her. And he will accept a cold beer, and everyone will feel as though they spent the night working, instead of what they really did, spent the night drinking while watching a talented person work. Here's the truth. There are certain humans who are very talented with engines, and parts, and machines, and sound engineering, and science, and math, and chemistry, and there are certain humans who simply are not, and gender has nothing whatever to do with it. Nothing. I have never, ever, ever used my penis to hammer a nail, or fix a car, or tile a roof. That would be, this would be an excellent place for you to think about a funny penis joke. I'll wait. Talent is talent. It's not gender-specific or gender-ordained, and to ever have thought it was, or should be, is utter madness. The Johnny Heller DIY Method. Don't do it yourself. DIY. Here's my rule when it comes to DIW. <laughs> Here's my rule when it comes to DIY. Never DIY. Don't do it yourself. I recently upgraded my booth. I did me. What I did and how I did it is zero to do with my gender. And I'll tell you the story and try not to digress too much. All that stuff above this was a rant about idiot gender issues and moronic misconceptions that irk me. This stuff that follows coming up right now is the actual point of the blog. Backstory. We, Joanne and I, were coughing a lot and feeling uncomfortable in our whisper booth. We researched and decided the problem was the acoustic foam, which I had stuck everywhere. And it was old, and to use an industry term, icky. So we decided to upgrade to acoustic panels. Real DIY folks build their own acoustic panels. DIY folks, like me, employ the DDIY method. Don't do it yourself. Means you have to have someone do it for you, or at least have someone help you. This is where having friends and recognizing their talents comes in very handy. I called Bill Lord. He had extra acoustic panels that he built because he can DIY. He had me measure my booth, and he made a template map showing me where to put the acoustic panels in my booth to guarantee a great sound. He and the wonderful Joya Lord, that's his wife, packed the panels and sent them to me. And they included the Velcro and the glue I needed. It was perfect. Joanne and I took everything out of the booth, and we cleaned and vacuumed it, and I called Bill and asked him how to put the Velcro on the panels, and he told me. And I did it. I absolutely rocked it. Except for one part. You remember how I told you that Bill had me measure my booth? I couldn't even do that right. I mismeasured. Bill designed the panels to fit in a bigger booth than mine. Did I cry? No. Did I admit that I was a failure at DIY? <laughs> you bet. Did I call someone for help? Yep, because DDIY. I called Bill. He laughed at me and then told me how to use the panels in a way that would work, and it did. Then he told me to buy some baffles. And I said, baffled, what's a baffle? And he told me. And I bought the ones he told me to, and I cut them down to size, and I shoved them in the baffle place, and all was wonderful. Th these, are, these are them. They were giant, and I had to cut. There's like a quarter of the baffle here. I, 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 they're, they're big, and you, and you cut it. Anyway, I'm digressing. Then we got a new mic. Now, how did we pick the mic? Michael Kinsey of Learning Ally posted that he had some AT4047s for sale. I'd heard good things, but was it a good mic for us? I had no idea. I used DDIY. And I was told by a friend that the AT4047 would be a good mic for us. And he was right, it is. All was wonderful in the world. The new sound booth sound was approved by Apple News, and they started working with me. 
After a short time, Jamie Matler discovered I had a buzz in my sound system. She and her crack team worked with me to find the problem. Now, they were amazing, and they didn't mind that I knew next to nothing about anything. They were patient, and they understood my DDIY philosophy. Turned out I had a sound processor and an interface, and I was using both for years, and now the processor was dying and buzzing as it croaked. Following Jamie's direction, I unplugged the stuff in one gadget and plugged into a different gadget, and then I forgot which buttons needed to be pressed on the interface, so I had to send a bunch of pictures of it to Jamie until it looked right and sounded right, and now all is well in our booth. And then we got a super-duper Mac Mini with an M1 chip and a million TBs, uh, terabytes of giga something. I had no idea how to import stuff from my old Mac. Did I do it myself? Of course not. DDIY. Facebook friends told me what to do, and Hillary Huber cautioned me not to do it the way I did it, because then all my pictures and stuff I didn't need would get transferred too. But I didn't think that would happen, as it made no sense that that should happen. But it did happen, and I should have listened, but I didn't, and that's something to keep in mind. If you're gonna get good advice, follow it. Our booth is still hot as hell, but it sounds great. So what did I learn? Nothing. I'm as confused and dazed as I was when we started the update. But the update is done, and I did it by not doing it myself. I recognize that I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm happy to enlist the help of experts, and I'm willing to pay them for their expertise. Happily for me, none of the experts mentioned charge me a dime. <laughs> and that, dear friends, is how you do it yourself. Just don't do it yourself. Thank you for watching this blog. I hope you liked it. More to come. Stay tuned and do subscribe if you will. I think that's the whole point of this. <laughs>